but having grown up in Florida, I knew a bit about Wachula. I knew this is a place where probably only a few thousand people lived in the whole county, and we're talking sort of backwoods Florida. This is a very rural country town. There were two stoplights in the city of Wachula in 1978, two of them. One of them was not far from the courthouse and the other one was about a mile to the south. It's a small town, neighbors trust each other, people don't lock their doors. It's a place where generations, generations have lived in the same county. Hardy Memorial was the only hospital in Wachula. 50 beds, six doctors, and one obstetrician, Dr. William Black. The week of November 29, 1978, two women came to Hardy Memorial to have their babies. One was Regina Twig, and the other was Barbara Coker Mays. Barbara Coker grew up in Wachula. She grew up to marry Bob Mays. They were a beautiful couple. He was handsome and charming, and she was tall and lovely. They were the perfect Florida couple. We had a nice place to live on a lake, a boat, and ski. Just really enjoyed life. It was wonderful. Barbara and I knew we wanted to have a family. She just didn't get pregnant. <laughs> we, uh, we wanted to have a child very badly, and we just kept trying. And she came home one day and just had a real peculiar grin on her face and whispered in my ear, you know, what do I think about being a dad? We were very jubilant. She was pregnant and it, uh, you know, looked like everything was going to come together for us. Approximately three hours into her labor, the fetal monitoring disclosed fetal distress. Fetal distress became severe enough that I feared for the baby's life and ordered emergency cesarean section for delivery. I was unable to determine very much about the baby's condition due to the fact that the cesarean required my attention to the mother. And so this seemed to be a very hard delivery, and they were looking forward to bringing the new baby home. He decided to call the baby Kimberly. About the same time, Dr. Black, another patient, Regina Twig, she also was about to have a baby. My parents were always bringing a baby home. <laughs> Seems like mom was always pregnant, you know, with eight children. <laughs> she would sit us down, hey kids, guess what? <laughs> the rumors at the time were that Barbara Mays, whose maiden name was Coker, the family, the Cokers, were of some prominence or importance in town. The Coker family has been in Hardy County for as long as I can remember. Contrast that to the Twiggs family, who were said to be quite poor. Ernest was employed by Amtrak, and he worked at the station here. He was heavily involved in helping people get on and off the trains and making reservations and all that. Regina had a teaching degree, but with all the children, she didn't work that much. <laughs> so Barbara Mays gives birth on November 29th, and three days later, Regina Twig goes into labor. At midnight, just around 12 midnight, the contraction started, and I told my husband, Ernest, come on, Ernest, we need to get down there. I said, the baby's going to be coming. So we take off down the road to Wachula, which is a country setting. I mean, it's like nothing is around except the animals that hide in the scrub brush. I'm saying, oh, Ern, uh, hurry, Ern. But he says, just be calm, dear. I can't go through the stop signs, dear. Now just breathe, dear. We drove around to where the emergency room was, and they called Dr. Black right away. And meanwhile, I'm saying, oh, you will give me some gas, won't you? You will give me some gas, won't you? Because I was the biggest coward on this earth. And people are astounded that I had that many children, and, and that was, was that big of a coward, you know, when at my deliveries. She had a spontaneous, easy delivery of what appeared at the time to be a perfectly healthy infant. Oh, I had my heart set on a girl. We had lost a baby girl in 1975. She was our last little girl. Regina had lost a daughter, a baby girl, Vivia, to a heart defect at the age of six weeks. We were on the road, and Vivia actually passed away. She was on the back seat with me, and I noticed that she was choking, and her eyes were rolling in her head. My father took Vivia from me, and did CPR on her. 
By the time we got to the hospital, all I remember is them running her in really quick. And I remember being in the back part of the car. And my parents come out and let us know that she had passed away. So Regina Twig is in the hospital. She's a little bit nervous, hoping her next child is healthy. And when she's told initially that the child is healthy, she's very relieved. They decide to call the baby Marlena. I said, oh, wow, and she, you know, oh, I'm so happy. It's a baby girl. We have a little girl again. Regina told me that when she was in the hospital, she was walking down the hall. You know, after having the baby, you get up and walk around and all. So she was walking down the hall, and she looked into the room. There was only one other patient in, in the whole maternity section. And she saw that the mother seemed very sad and distressed. And she stopped and lingered and said, what did you have? And the woman said, a girl, but looked down and looked away. Then a nurse came along and hurried Regina away and said, this is a very sad story. When she came home, she told me about that. That that was, she, she wondered what was going on with the situation there. Regina had been breastfeeding her baby every four hours. And on the third day, a nurse handed her a baby that just didn't seem like the same baby. She noticed that the baby didn't want a nurse, and the baby looked kind of blue. She said, I don't think this is my baby. This, my, this baby is darker in color. And the nurse said, no, uh, Mrs. Twig, this is your baby. You're just, you know, you're a little nervous about everything. And they said, look at the bands on the baby I'm giving you. The baby had a band on the ankle and a band on the wrist that said twig. So Regina was sort of pressured by the nurse to accept that, in fact, she was, was getting the right baby. I just think when everybody around you is telling you you're just being a nervous new mother, what are you going to say? It sounds crazy. It does. And I never dreamed, not for a second on this earth, that they had given me somebody else's baby. And later I mentioned it to my husband, what I had said to her. And my husband said, you're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. That, this is crazy. Don't talk like that. It's stupid. That sounds like something that my dad would say. That That's pretty much how our household ran, you know, was, hey, everything's OK. You know, let's not, let's not upset anybody here, because this, this is what they're telling you. The next day, a doctor who Regina didn't know, who was not her doctor, came in and said, I'm Dr. Palmer. We understand that you had a baby who died from heart disease. This baby has a heart problem, too. And I just began to wail through the whole hospital floor. And Ernest, did, in his laid back way, oh, calm down, dear, calm down, you know, and he tried to comfort me. And, um, but my heart was broken. It's like, oh my God, just like Vivia, just like Vivia, oh God, no, oh God, no. That kind of thing. The baby had a a very severe heart a condition, and they didn't expect the baby to live over a week. Regina left the hospital later that morning, along with Ernest and the sick baby. The Mays left the hospital carrying the well baby. It would be almost 10 years before anyone learned for sure the babies had been switched. When that happened, $100 million in damages. All hell broke loose. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.